Coming with CryEngine 5.4, we have a new Substance integration for all of our users. You can find the Substance integration inside of Tools, and then go down to the very bottom with Substance, and you'll see the Graph Editor, Mapping Editor, and Instance Editor. We'll be looking at these closer by actually implementing or importing a Substance material itself. We are also looking at a calibration level, which comes from our marketplace on CryEngine.com. To access this, I can bring up CryEngine.com and we'll go to the calibration level. And in order to actually use this, you need to add it to your cart, which then puts it inside of the launcher for CryEngine, and then you can add it as a game project. To start, we'll notice that we have these folders here, but we won't actually contaminate our structure. So we'll right click and add or create a folder and rename it Substance. Inside of this folder is completely empty. What we need to do is go onto our desktop, which I can minimize the browser, and drag and drop a Substance Archive into our asset browser. Once inside of our asset browser, we can maximize it and then right click and create an instance of, say, Brick01 Brown A. This brings up the graph preset window. And inside of this, we can see that we can change the resolution, the name, and actually the folder where it will save all of these presets. So let's go ahead and change it to 2K. Down here, we have the different maps, such as albedo, reflectance, and normals with smoothness. And then at the bottom, displacement. Normals itself is unchecked because this is legacy. And then on the right side, we can actually see where we can change the resolution. Going into the editor output, we can see how all of these different texture maps combine inside of this material, and we can delete how these are actually path, whether it be RGBA or individual channels. I'm going to leave it as default so we can see it for import correctly. I'm going to click OK, and this will generate the textures inside of our asset browser. You should see them pop up momentarily. Once inside of the asset browser, now we have all of our maps and we're ready to apply it to one of our shader balls. So going down, you can click to the material editor. I have this already docked on the right side. And what I want to do is either create a new material or I drop an existing one. You can right click and add your own new material. But like I said, I want to eye drop it. So what I'm going to do is take the eyedropper and I'm going to eye drop it specifically on that material. And what I need to do is then change the texture maps inside of this. So I'm going to source to it by clicking the Browse, and then I'm going to go to the folder that we created called Substance. Next, what I'm going to do, because we see it in the screen, is duplicate the path, because it's just the easiest way to put things all together without having to go back and forth. I already know the naming of the normal, so I'm going to change it from diff to ddna. Next, I'll do the spec. And lastly, I'll fill in the height. Keep in mind, with most outputs of Substance, it's underscore height instead of the underscore DISPL, which is common. Looking closer, we can see that our shader ball has been affected, and the texture maps have been applied correctly. Down in the shader gen params, I can also look at the difference that palm displacement provides, including the self-shadow strength. These are just some of the benefits from Substance in general. Bringing this up with the instance, we can now change how this behaves. These properties are exposed to you inside of Substance Designer. In this, we've exposed how many bricks are horizontal and vertical. So by changing this, it dynamically updates that texture inside of the material editor. You can also randomize a seed. So say you want to change something with not going back into Photoshop, you just click Randomize, and then you have an entire different texture setup or brick layout just by one click. Like before, just to show it on the shader ball, we can go into the editor output, and then we can change how this behaves. So I'm going to go in there, I'm going to select and delete, and then I'm going to connect the R to the R channel, or red, and then the ball itself should only push out the red channel in the diffuse or albedo slot, as shown by how it looks in this scene. I'm going to go ahead and delete this, because I want to have it reflect accordingly.
This pretty much goes over the entire setup as far as importing and tweaking your substance materials or archives inside of CryEngine 5.4. It's good to note that Substance itself is actually on a 30-day free trial, so you don't have to do anything at cost. And then you can also go to one of their sites where they promote growth or sharing of their own materials. And it is called Substance Share. So of many materials that are free and available here, such as the Sci-Fi panel by Wes McDermott of Algorithmic. So I could download this, bring the archive directly into CryEngine 5.4, and then I would be able to see it display inside and adjust it accordingly. With this all-new integration in CryEngine 5.4, we look forward to seeing what you, the developers, can achieve with Substance in the engine.